FM and this is the Integrity Station, the third day in the month of September, year 2020, and lots and lots of sporting stories, sporting news to talk about this morning. Welcome to the show. This is the voice of blessing for Wuwe. And so much has happened in the last 24 hours, uh, from the, the world of boxing to the NBA playoffs there in the United States. We we'll talk about that today, this morning. Uh, tennis as well. The US Open 2020 is still going on, and uh, some couple of surprising results have uh, begun to trip in. We'll talk about that this morning. That's uh, from the US Open in the in the in the in the NBA there. I mean tennis in the world of tennis rather. And then the NPFL as well. We told you about uh, um, announcements coming up from the NPFL last uh, yesterday on Just Football. And there's something that has to do with uh, uh, you know talking about uh, the kind of uh, deal streaming. We've always talked about having the NPFL back on TV and something in, the, in that line is on the, the on the offer this morning. We'll talk about all of that and so much more on Sports Bank this uh, good great Thursday morning. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you join us. Uh, let's start off things up uh, from boxing. Quick story here uh, concerning Anthony Joshua. Well, it's uh, we're waiting for his fight later in December, but then he has warned that he and Tyson Fury must both avoid banana skins uh, to keep their planned undisputed title fight on track. Uh, Joshua is expected to defend his IBF, WBA and WBO heavyweight uh, titles against Kubrat Pulev in December, while Fury is contracted to a third WBC title fight with uh, Deontay Wilder. The 30-year-old who has agreed financial terms with uh, to two fights with Fury to decide the undisputed champion said and I quote I listened to an interview the other week uh, and Fury said we need to make the fight and stop messing around but I thought we agreed the fight then he said if Dylan White wins he's going to vacate the belt I just think he's got a lot of things going on in his life and he says things that don't really add up the words of um, uh, Anthony Joshua they're talking about uh, Tyson Fury he says I respect him I don't really know him but I respect him as a human I could continue to talk but the best talking will be done in the ring it is the best place to leave our to let our gloves do the talk and I, I know that many people will agree with that uh, that's uh, on the ring as well we get to see the talk let's get to see uh, what these guys have on uh, their sleeves up on their sleeves there with their fights but then uh, Joshua has won against Kubrat Pulev later on in December that's one that should be his immediate uh, have his immediate attention at this point uh, Ferrum, I you guys here uh, good morning Ferrum. let's talk about the NBA the box show Miami Heat uh, after two games in the NBA playoffs and thanks to the Jimmy Butler free through but all of a sudden the jury is out on Giannis Antetokounmpo once again yeah good morning to you blessing good morning to fate and of course that's a wonderful list now there well, it's good to be back here again to talk sports well talking about the NBA uh it's been a wild Eastern Conference you know playoff right there especially in the in the semi-finals and of course uh, Milwaukee Bucks losing to Miami Heat you know two down now at this point in time I don't know uh why people are actually blaming you know uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo because as a matter of fact he's not the only one uh, right there playing the game you know Kevin Meldon too was also there Eric Bordzell was also there and Brooke, Brooke Lopez also these are guys that actually should be stepping up and even if Giannis is not actually you know coming to the party and all that but then we can't take anything away from Miami Heat uh, this is a team that was actually you know seeded sixth the lowest you know seed you know team right there going into the playoff and you know a lot of people were not giving them a chance against you know Giannis and of course uh, Milwaukee Bucks but then I think you know uh, looking from the psychological aspect of it I think you know a lot of things has actually gone down during the the past few weeks uh, that actually concerns the Milwaukee Bucks players, especially uh, with the shooting of that, you know, uh, Black American right there last weekend. And I mean, last week. And of course, I think you know, probably it has actually affected them to some particular extent, and of course, affecting their game at this point in time. But I don't think that should be a major excuse for these guys at this point in time because they know that you know they are fighting for a tournament, they are fighting for a trophy, and of course, they should actually uh, put their heart together to make sure that they actually get the win at that point in time. But also, you can't take anything away are from uh, Miami Heat. These guys have been so, so solid. Like I said, they were not really seeded going into the playoff. And against all odds, you know, uh, they, they, they got the better of their, you know, playoff, you know, candidates right there. And of course, uh, against uh, Giannis and of course, uh, Milwaukee Bucks. But then it's not over. It's a game of several series. I think uh, if there is any team that can actually do a comeback, it's definitely Milwaukee Bucks and of course, Giannis. But then he has to step up his game. I've seen some of the games that he actually played. He has not really been the kind of player that we expected, you know, in this particular series especially against Miami the last two games that they lost as no, he has not really been impressive though it might have some double digit points right there but then it's still below you know level it's still below power of the kind of performance uh these guys actually do not when it comes to playoffs are uh, right there but then you know good one for the heat hopefully they can actually you know continue with that but if not that means you know Milwaukee Bucks will definitely be qualified to the you know finals of this okay conference. hopefully they continue with that just two games played uh, about uh, well if they can wrap it up with, in another two games yeah. talk about uh, uh you know box being
been bonded out of the playoffs there. Yeah. And yeah. then, so what's other things happening? Yeah, and of course, other things. Also, Toronto Raptors also in the mix right now. They are also two down to Boston Celtics. I think there is just one team you cannot defeat when it comes to you know uh, NBA, and of course, that team has to be Boston Celtics for Toronto Raptors. Three times they've met this season, and those three times they've actually lost to Boston Celtics at this point in time. And it's looking like it's going to be a very very torrid situation for Boston. So I mean, for you know Toronto Raptors at this point in time, a lot of people are talking about the fact that you know uh, they lost uh, Kelly Leonard and all that. But then I want to disagree because uh, this other guy is talking about Pascal, Pascal Se uh, Seaken and Vavel. These guys have actually been solid so far. But then if there is also another team that can do a comeback, it's definitely Raptors. I could remember last season they were two down against uh, Milwaukee Bucks and they came back, you know, to win that particular series four to two. So I think you know it's not over until it is over for Toronto Raptors. And of course, again yesterday, OKC Thunder's against all odds, you know, uh, they lost uh, to Houston Rockets to actually qualify to the semifinals. And you know, uh, I would say it was a very very tough one uh, between these two teams. I, I never expected them to actually give Houston Rockets, you know, that much run for their money, you know, in, in the playoffs. But then they actually did the unthink unthinkable. But then if you actually look at their regular season, these two teams have all won the same number of games, 44-44. They also lost the same number of games, I think 27 each, also in the in the, in the regular season. So that shows that OKC Thunder, they were never a pushover coming into the playoff. But of course, kudos to CP, uh, you know, CP3, talking about Chris, Chris Paul. Paul. You know, it was really, really massive. Really Ron James was saying we should give him his respect. Definitely, he deserves the respect because coming into the season, right from the beginning of the season, it was not even given a chance. OKC Thunder was not even given a chance. They were given 0 0.2 chance of qualifying to the playoffs. And against all odds, they actually qualified and, you know, you wouldn't even expect them to be pushing the likes of James Anden and Russell Westbrook right there. But they did it and he has even changed, it, not only has, has he made OKC Thunder more competitive, he has even had more money, you know, uh, kind of, uh, with their franchise sale and all that to that particular club. So I think, you know, even though they are actually out of the competition now, I think kudos to them for what they've been able to achieve so far. And of course, you know, I was still looking forward to what we happen right there, you know, uh, between, I think, uh, Lakers and of course, uh, the uh, Houston Rockets that they actually qualified to the semifinals of the Western Conference. Okay, that's the wrap-up from the, the NBA playoffs uh, currently going in the bubble and uh, from games played last night as well. If away from that, away from basketball, let's talk tennis now. Uh, tennis on the show uh, this morning, the US Open 2020. Well, top seed Carolina Pliskova was knocked out of the US Open in the second round with a heavy defeat by Francis Caroline Garcia. Uh, runner-up, Pliskova was runner-up in 2016. She lost 6-1, uh, 7-6 six, six, to the world number 50. And check world number 3, Pliskova was the highest ranked player here at, in the absence of Australian Ashley Barty and uh, Romania's uh, Simona Halep. Meanwhile, other seed to Tumbu where Elina Rab Rab Rabakina, Maketa Vondrasova and Alison Risike. But there were victories for 4th seed Naomi Osaka, 6th seed uh, Petra Kivitova and 8th seed Petra Matic and Estonian, 14th seed Annette Kontaveit. And the men's category, Kyle Edmond, that's Britain's Kyle Edmond, lost uh, to US Open top seed Novak Djokovic, while his compatriot Cameron Nori advanced to the third round of the Grand Slam for the first time. Well, it was unexpected, unexpectedly for Edmond. He won the first set, but ultimately he struggled to keep up. But you know with Novak Djokovic, sometimes he allows you to get the first set, <laughs> uh, first set only only for him to hammer you uh, in the second set. But that's uh, the result for from there. And for world number 76, uh, upset ninth set. Uh, that's Cameron Nori now. He defeated uh, Argentina's uh, Federico Korsh Korea, 6-3, 6-4, And um, Alexander Zverev also was taken to fourth set by American teenager Brandon Nakashima before securing a hard fought US Open second round uh, victory in uh, that one. Uh, Fate, I did enjoy doing good morning. Let's talk. Yeah, good morning to you. Good morning, Fermi. And of course, to our event, it's nice good to be back uh, this morning on Sports Bank. Well, uh, straight to tennis, straight to the US Open, straight to uh, Flushing Meadows. It's been a very, very interesting one. Unfortunately for, uh, for uh, Pliskova, uh, she got knocked out uh, yesterday. You know, uh, we all, I, I personally thought uh, Pliskova would do well this time around because uh, well, world number three, well, especially when world number one and two are not in the competition. So she's the top seed going into that competition. So you'd expect her to finally win a Grand Slam. And especially when uh, her best performance in the US Open has been at, uh, in the uh, Grand Slam event has been at the US Open when she got to the finals of uh, of the US Open in 2016. So I thought uh, this time around she'll be able uh, to do well, but she delivered uh, a below par performance. And maybe that is why 
at 28 now right now she's still yet to win a grand slam and well maybe i uh, should have to wait until next year or wait uh, until the next uh, grand slam for her to eventually do that and it's uh, quite unfortunate for her then i uh, you know we also had uh, upsets for uh, for marketer von Drusova. some of the other uh, big uh, big ladies also uh, got knocked out yeah, unfortunately a big lady <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, based on uh, on the cities, based on what we have now, she's world uh, number thirteen or thereabouts. So, our uh, world number thirteen, when you have world number fifty in uh, in uh, someone like Caroline uh, Gasha getting that getting into the next stage you expect that well uh the bigger ladies in terms of the rankings would do uh would do better but good one for uh for carrying uh gasha uh well maybe uh she's finally finding her food because she had a very very uh good uh good game yesterday i saw fantastic uh baseline as fantastic uh uh ground strokes from her to actually win that uh, that particular game and that is uh you know a very good one then in the men's game well uh novak djokovic the untouchable one uh so far he lost the first set to uh, to the Briton, but uh, he eventually came back. He showed uh, the stuff of champion there. He showed that well, uh, when it comes to all this, I'm still uh, very much head and shoulder above all of you. And uh, that was what he did. You know, he lost uh, that first set about uh, seven, six or thereabout. He went into a tiebreaker. And, and then he went into the second set. And uh, well, <laughs> it was the uh, uh, same story that like we've always known. So uh, the, the US Open continues. I will continue to, uh, well, hope uh, I'm, I'm it for uh, fantastic performances from all these, uh, you know, athletes, especially uh, due to the fact that we don't have some of the best around, but it's not their fault that we don't have the best around. So, uh, whatever happens, it's still uh, a very good event. I was still hoping that uh, well, maybe we'll get uh, new names on the on, on those events. And maybe then, new maybe we'll get new names, new winners. Well, today, Sloan Stevens will be in action, Ellis Mertens will be in action, Madison Keys, and the Murray, all of these guys will be in action later today. And somehow, yesterday, we missed uh, Venus Williams being knocked out in the first round for the very first time in the US Open 40 years old is it time for this lady to retire oh, well. <laughs> I mean she's getting beats left right and center but no. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. <laughs> At this stage, no, it doesn't matter. At this stage, uh, all she needs is uh, she enjoys the game. She just wants to continue to uh, to play. It doesn't it doesn't take anything away from her legacy. We all understand that. Well, uh, she's no longer as athletic as she used to be. She she can no longer make uh, that race down the entire court. You know that, and it's very easy. And uh, when you when you've lost that piece, it's very easy to you know begin to uh, find the angles of the court and to be difficult for you. Very easy to beat you. But uh, she enjoys playing tennis she's a legend she has a very very huge and big legacy in the game so it doesn't take anything from her as long as her body and her mind is still in the game let her continue to play okay <laughs> let her continue to play we we'll to see uh, when she finally hangs the racket in that one let's move, move away from tennis now back home here in nigeria but to table tennis where the nigerian table tennis federation has appointed the chairman of your state tennis association dr adesoji taiwo as the technical director of the federation as contained in a letter of appointment uh, dated 25 of August, uh, signed by the Secretary General of the Federation, Chimeze Asiebu, and made available to newsmen. Uh, yesterday, the NTTF President, uh, Engineer Isha Kutikon, had approved the appointment after the meeting of the board upon the nomination of Dr. Adiso Jitaiwo. Also, the appointment was as a result of his contribution to the game at the state and national level, urging him to use his wealth of experience to steer the department to a higher level. Well, we we'll to see what he would do eventually, but I don't know. Table tennis in your state, Faith, how would you describe uh, well, uh, it has been uh, you know at a decline we've not been at our usual best usual uh domineering best before in the past uh we always uh all your state used to dominate uh the world of table tennis but maybe uh this new appointment is, is showing that maybe something is being done right it's been made at uh, the technical director so we expect that i will bring his expertise to the national level and of course all your states will continue to benefit uh from it and we'll begin to have a more a more rising talent to begin to Sports are more potentials on the street, and then uh, when we go into the uh, national sports festival, we would know that well. I uh, will expect one or two medals, or uh, one or two gold medals, are uh, from table tennis, maybe, and the uh, men's events, women's events, even the doubles. Who knows? So uh, there's nothing wrong in uh, in doing that. But table tennis has always been one of those sports that are your state. Uh, we know they are, are perennial superpowers. Uh, when we are looking at uh, the national state, so uh, we are hoping that uh, we would uh, turn the curve and. We 
we have that upward uh, spiral and the upward curve will eventually uh, come up. So, uh, good one for table tennis in your city. We are hoping that it will turn out to positive results for us. Hopefully, the appointment will bring about something positive for t table tennis here in your state. Let's talk football to the NPFL. Fair on me. Mm -hmm. The league management company organizers of the NPFL, they have signed a television partnership deal with the Red Strike Media Nigeria. The financial details and duration of the agreement were not revealed, but according to a statement from the LMC spokesperson, Ari Wala, it says Red Striker, Red Strike Media <laughs> are expected to create an NPFL media and marketing company to commercialize the NPFL. And they will also live stream matches every week of the season through its own platform, NPFL.tv, as well as broadcasting it through other media channels. And uh, Che Udiko, who is the chairman of the LMC, said, and I quote, this is exactly what Nigerian football needs. Our partnership with Red Strike is groundbreaking, enabling the NPFL to follow its ambitions of becoming Africa's premier football league and to be recognized as one of the one of the most important leagues globally. Well, I've had this interview of uh, the former CEO of uh, LFC, that's uh, Honorable Undo Kairabo, for about a year now. Uh, this, uh, about June, July 2019, where he was talking about some of the plans that the LMC had on the ground to ensure that they have a production company. Listen to him, then we'll return to talk about this. We are trying to build a production company. Financing is going to determine how fast we move, but we are seriously working on having our own independent production company. This last few years, we've been depending on foreign production companies. They've withdrawn now, we are stranded. I think there's an urgent need to increase or introduce a more modern, sophisticated production capacity. The league management company is exploiting ways to bring this about so that we have products that we can put online, we have products that we can dice and cut in a manner that the digital space is filled with domestic sporting activities. Like I said, that interview is about a year ago, June, July 2019. Somehow I didn't delete it. I knew it might come in handy someday. But hey, listen to what we were saying about um, having a production a company. production company, yeah. That. But now MPFL.tv is here. This is the way to go. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, this is one step in the right direction. This is one thing that we've actually been actually, uh, you know, uh, clamoring for that we need to have, you know, our, our content, our Nigerian professional football league, you know, uh, football, uh, you know, online for people to actually watch and see. I'm talking about Red Strike. I think this an international sports management and uh, of course a commercial consultancy uh, that deals with stuffs like this and i think you know uh bringing it online is actually a good one a, a right step in the right direction but then we still need more details we still need to be actually uh given how this will actually work at the end of the day because you know what does the teams in the league stand to give from this kind of you know uh you know uh, uh you know a uh, deal with this particular company what do they what do they stand to gain because when we go abroad when we go to senior clients and see you know a broker rights you know being given to tvs we know other money is being shared uh with teams right there in the english premier league in the spanish la liga it might not be equally but at least the teams are actually getting something and we need something like that if you are actually going to actually compete you know with the big boys right there in the world of football and all that but then i think you know is the right step in the right direction but this is not it all this is not where it should stop we still need to have our content on the terrestrial tvs because not everybody do have that opportunity to stream online not every Everybody, we have what it takes to want to, you know, abide that and say he wants to actually watch the MPFL online to stream and all that. But we won't actually totally criticize this. This is a very good step, and hopefully, they can actually build more on this uh, with the MPFL. Uh, well, uh, well, just like Pharaoh said, we didn't get uh, the financial uh, implication to this. We don't uh, really have uh, too much uh, details about it, but it is a very good one, especially for the branding of the league, especially for uh, the players. Now uh, we can know what is going on in the league. You, if you need clips of players, you would find it online. And, you know, especially for... Or would you uh, be willing to stream an MPFL game? Yes, I would. I would, but that's I'm you. not sure, I'm not sure <laughs> many you. people... I'm exactly. not sure many people would do that, yeah. but we'll say that that's <laughs> If you, if you could stream games in Europe, in England, so in why Italy, not? Why? Uh, why I, not think, I think that's that's down to because probably because of the quality of football. Maybe some people might not want to actually stream it because it's MPFL. No, it's just the branding. And now we're starting. We're doing something, and that is what are uh, they doing with uh, Red Strike Media? Uh, they have a CEO in Mike Fanan who has uh, you no. Know, a very very broad or a long time wealth of experience in this uh, in this kind of thing so i'm expecting it to do uh, to go down well 
but I don't want uh, it to end the way it has always ended, where maybe after some years now, uh, it will stop and we hear that uh, there was a breach uh, uh, in a trust contract, or a yeah. breach in uh, contractual agreement or and then we'll have a fractious relationship between uh, both parties because that is how it ends most times, especially when we don't have all those details right now. But uh, no problem. It's good that we will be seeing the league on uh, whether uh, online or whichever way, but at least we have clips. Agents abroad will be able to see clips of our players and I think it's still uh, a very good one. Okay, moving away from that, the Super Eagles will play Ivory Coast and Tunisia in an international friendly uh, matches. That's in October. General Drob men will take on the Elephant of Ivory Coast on the uh, 9th of October before locking on with the Cartage Eagles just four days later. That's uh, Those games will be in Austria. Uh, but then the question is, uh, for the Super Falcons, when are they going to have a coach? Well, uh, Mama Jupinik said that he already gave another consulting firm to uh, the gave them the tax of getting the, the Super Falcons a uh, new coach. And uh, well, it's always been in the next two weeks, in the next one week, and so, so far nothing has been done. But meanwhile, in, Bra in Brazil, they're talking about the men's and national, women's national mm. team getting equal pay at this point. That's according to the Brazilians uh, Football Association. They announced yesterday that N Sports, both uh, the men's national team and the women's national team, will be getting equal pay. Where is Africa when it comes to equal pay? Well, the BBC Premier League update is up next. Uh, something on transfer. Uh, Manchester United signing Van de Beek. We'll be back still with us. BBC Premier League update from the home of Premier League football. Hello from Colm Harrison at the BBC Sports Centre. Manchester United have completed the signing of the Dutch midfielder Donny van der Beek from Ajax. The fee is $47 million plus another $7 million in potential add-ons. 23-year-old van der Beek scored 41 goals in 175 games for Ajax. The Tottenham midfielder Eric Dyer admits there's a certain way that he should carry himself. It's thought he was referring to an incident earlier in the year when he climbed into the stands to confront a fan. Dyer was banned for four matches and fined more than $50,000 for the incident, which came after Spurs' FA Cup defeat against Norwich in March. It's believed the fan in question was involved in an argument with Dyer's brother. Well, the player himself was speaking to the BBC whilst on international duty with England, ahead of Saturday's Nations League qualifier in Iceland. People have asked me about the stand incident. I'm, there'll be a time where I'll talk about it, but it won't be while I'm playing in England. So um, I try and carry myself in the way I, I see best as a, as a person. You know, I've grown up and you know educated to act in a certain way and carry myself in a certain way. And it's irrelevant where I am or who I'm representing. I just believe there's a way in which I should carry myself. Everton have agreed a deal with Watford for their French midfielder Abdoulaye Decoré. It could be worth up to $34 million. Everton tried to sign the player last year, but Watford refused to sell. That position changed, though, with their relegation from the Premier League at the end of the season. Decoré has agreed a four-year contract. For more football news from the BBC, go to bbc.com forward slash football. BBC Premier League update from the home of Premier League football. Welcome back. Who is keeping an eye on what's going on there at Everton uh, with uh, Carlo Ancelotti? I mean, uh, Ducure almost here. I mean, really Rudiger almost here. There's Alan somewhere. What is the fate of uh, Iwobi in this one? <laughs> ah, that was very, very difficult for him. He still has uh, Bernard also in the team to uh, to compete with. Till Walcott is also uh, somewhere there. But you understand that Everton bringing in a big manager in Carlo Ancelotti already shows intent, already shows that uh, they, they have uh, serious uh, intentions to do uh, big things. So, I'm not uh, entirely surprised because big managers uh, need to do big things, and that is why they are uh, they are bringing in big players like Ames Rodriguez, Alan, and all those uh, kind of players. You expect uh, Everton to get maybe a, a European slot uh, there mm. in there. But yeah, uh, they I don't trust them <laughs> until it starts. I don't trust them. It looks good on paper, but then on the field of play, let's see what these guys can be able to do. But then I think the reason why we are actually afraid of uh, you know for it will be is because he has not actually hopped his game. Because I feel if he's actually playing into the level of you know uh, been making it to the team i think he should be working straight into that everton squad but then he has not actually done enough for himself uh, right then that everton squad but then it's just what it is compete for a shirt and see if you can get one okay chukwesi's happiness is our priority that's according to villarreal you can find that story on the front page of sporting sun here's where we hang our boots on sports bank this morning thanks for being a part of the show to join us tomorrow at 7 30 for winning friday edition on saturday we'll have lots and lots of time to talk about all of this transfer gist thanks for being a part of work with 
straight at DDG. Yeah, and follow me at Debo Ega. My name is Blessing for Wowe. Au revoir. Flash FM.